Welcome to the DraftKings Daily Trot. I'm Jason Gilbert, Jake Gilbert 11. With me is Russell Clay at Russell J. Clay. Taking a look at a 13-game slate here on Friday, and uh, we got a big boy and uh, relatively, I mean, average arms. I mean, you got a couple guys up top, but I think it's going to be a high-scoring slate. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, yeah, not many... There's not many pitchers when you're sort of diving through this initially um, that you really like. So that usually that usually tends to lean on on more offensive side and more stacking. So that's definitely the the basic way I'm looking at this slate for sure. Yeah, definitely. And jumping right into things here, you got the Royals and Phillies uh, in Philadelphia, and uh, Jeremy Hellicks and Ian Caddy. I mean, two arms that. Have pitched, you know, particularly well this this year at times. Um, but I still think at these price tags, you can kind of actually look at both sides. I mean, more so the Royal side, of course. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, Alex Gordon still coming at that reduced price, which you you really like. Um, but yeah, in terms of these matchups, I'm not really looking at um, Hellickson, but Ian Kennedy, I could see throwing in a tournament. Yeah, I definitely could too. And, and you look at you know attacking Alex, and it's going to be with the lefties. I mean, 378 Woba allowed this mm-hmm. year, 2.02 home runs per nine. So as you mentioned, the reduced price tag for Gordon. Um, you're also looking at Eric Hosmer at 43 is a really nice price tag. So I don't even mind Merrifield or Perez. I mean, Perez 4K, um, obviously expensive for a catcher. But as we talked about pitching wise, I mean, you can kind of go balance as far as pitchers go. It's not going to kill you. Right, yeah, I don't think this is a full stack, but you definitely can throw some of these top options in, especially the Gordon Hosmer grouping. Um, that's not even too expensive, so I do like that. Yeah, definitely. And the only real Phillies name that stands out to me is Odubel Herrera at 4,300. Always a guy who, who I like. I mean, you look at Ian Kennedy, uh, average against lefties. I mean, Herrera's not a big home run guy, but obviously with Kennedy, there is that potential there. So I always like him as a cash game play. I mean, just that mid-range guy. Um, that kind of always just gets the job done. Oh, and last night, okay. Someone that's been completely off my radar and is now on my radar. Um, Marcus Simeon has 16 home runs this year. Dude, he crushes left-handed pitching. What? <laughs> I looked at that and I, I looked at the box score and I was like, wait, he has 16 home runs. I guess I should be paying attention to the guy betting ninth in the order. But uh anyway, back back to the slate. But I that was really surprising to me. Yeah, I mean, he. I mean, we talked about possibly a couple of guys getting a Bumgarner, and they did. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I would have rather actually used Bumgarner as a hitter last night. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Cubs and Mets. Next one here, Jason Hamill versus Jacob Degrom. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, it, Degrom. I mean, gonna have a tough, tough matchup here. For me, I don't really think uh, hitters are going to be guys I'm, I'm chasing here on a full slate. Um, mm-hmm. Not at a Rizzo price tag or Bryant. I mean, obviously, I think they can get to DeGrom, um, but I don't really see myself taking that chance on a, on a full game slate. Yeah, I mean, you got to like Rizzo just in general most nights, but DeGrom's obviously strong arm, and I, I could see throwing him in in a deep tournament where you're just trying to get weird, but in terms of pure process, you're not really looking at him. No, and as far as the Mets bats go, I mean, Jason Hamill's a, a decent right-handed arm, and yeah. they are cheaper, but really, I mean, this lineup's bad, and I don't really see myself going towards any towards, you know, any sort of offense with the Mets. I, I kind of danced around with Neil Walker for a little while, but uh, he wasn't my style, so I just got a new one. You know, I got a new partner. Yeah, you were. he was a little bit more salsa. You yeah, know, I was more like Contemporary, old. yeah. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Tigers and Rays, the next one here, Michael Fulmer versus Drew Smiley. Um, you know, this game last night, I mean, the Tigers put up all sorts of runs, um, but it really wasn't from any of their main guys. I mean, Maben had the big hit in the ninth. Uh, it was a lot kind of chipping away at the back end. It wasn't anything major. Drew Smiley kind of gives you that upside. I mean, Smiley's pitched good at times this year, uh, but overall, I mean, there's a lot of home run pop uh, from that right side. I mean, 1.94 home runs per nine to the lefties this season from Smiley. Who who was that guy in the comic books that had the the like he had the beams come from his face? And was, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I that do. was that was me to Justin Upton, twenty nine hundred. Um, what I don't understand that price. So, I mean, fifteen hundred to twelve hundred off the rest of the prices in that lineup. He's definitely someone I'm going to be looking at throwing in there. If you start off with him and Alex Gordon, I think that's a nice start. 
Yeah, I mean, you have, you've got some cash to really spend up on the infield and the third outfielder. And yeah, 2100 yeah. I mean, obviously Upton's more robust, but at that price tag, it makes it a little easier to kind of accommodate uh, having that yeah. zero if he does get you there. Because, I mean, obviously Smiley can be a guy who can pitch well at yes. times. But uh, I like these price tags. I mean, um, I like a Mabin at 4100 Cabrera a little expensive here. I, I actually like Victor Martinez at 4100 a little more. But obviously, mm-hmm. I, I think one through six are certainly a play again. Yeah, they're definitely in play again. I, I'm just surprised by that Upton price. I figured he'd at least be three to four hundred more, but um, definitely taking that. Yeah, definitely. And uh, on the other side, I'm not really looking at the Rays against Fulmer. Uh, Fulmer, I think, is going to have a quality start tonight. I don't see myself using Fulmer uh, a ton just because the price is a little high. But um, for me, I'm not really picking on him. I, I think the Rays bats are going to go kind of quiet tonight. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, a Logan Morrison's a decent price, but you're not really targeting Fulmer in any any way, shape, or form. So, not necessarily um, using them either way. Yeah, definitely. And uh, moving on next game, here we got the Angels and the Red Sox. Mm. Um, Chasin versus Stephen Wright, and uh, big big Vegas run total there for the Sox. And obviously, they're yeah. expensive as usual. Um, Hanley questionable, but should be actually good to go today, depending on what his status is. Um, obviously, she seems a, a target against. I mean, 325 over to lefties this year. Righties have actually hit him a little bit better. 347. Um, in that ballpark, you know, I think you look at the Sox offense, it's been kind of quiet of late. I think they kind of bust out. This, yeah, this is a night to stack the Red Sox for sure um, and feel relatively confident about it. I mean, you can go one through four. I wouldn't fade Ortiz tonight in favor of Hanley. So I'd be, I I mean, if you can throw those in there, you're obviously going to be having to look at some cheap pitching options. But I, I actually think that's a really viable thing. And then, I mean, Bryce Bat, Bryce, Br- <laughs> Bryce, Brents has actually been doing really good lately. And while obviously he's not the min price he was last week um, where he was just dominating, I think he's actually still viable along with Travis Shaw. So, um, I mean, I'd be looking at a full stack from this team um, if, if you can make it happen, if you decide you like some of these 7 to 8K pitchers, um, which, I mean, there's a lot of them, so... There might be some viable options here, and that might be a viable strategy. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, and obviously, I mean, you look at these guys. I mean, Betts at fifty three hundred, expensive. Pedroia four nine is expensive. You know, I don't mind these guys, um, and, and I do think as far as one offs, I do think they're viable. I mean, as you mentioned, you put you know Upton, um, Gordon into, and then maybe you throw a Betts, and you get that kind of big bat in there. Um, in an outfield spot. And I think that's kind of how I'm going to use the Sox is maybe, you know, two guys uh, in most of my lives. Of course, a full stack would definitely work, but I think I'm going to try and get maybe one or two in most of my lives as kind of a core thing. Right. And yeah, obviously the elephant in the room is Yulia Chassin, which um, definitely a target for this Red Sox offense. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Angels on the other side, right, just continues to kind of limit damage. I mean, he had a rocky start yeah. last time out, but Overall, uh, I don't like this Angels offense. It's kind of one. I mean, obviously, Trout always in play. Um, but outside that, I don't see myself using any Angels. And again, that last out again that that last outing against the uh, the Rangers was like his worst case scenario, and it was only three runs and like seven hits. So I mean, he's limiting damage um, pretty well. Um, so tough to really trust any Angels tonight. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think that's why Trout's kind of just the only honorable mention. Uh, and, I mean, that's how he's been for the most of the season. We get to the Angels offense, and unless they're facing a real, really weak pitcher, um, we're just kind of like, hey, Trout's always in play, and that's it. And that's just how those Angels – it's it's how that's, they're lined up, and it, it doesn't look good. No, definitely not. So uh, Marlins and Braves, next one here, Justin Nicolino versus Julio Tehran. Um, for me uh, – I'm not a big fan of this game overall for offense. I don't think you're going to see much here. Um, the prices are really cheap for the Marlins, but obviously it's a tough matchup against Taron, who's been pitching really well this season. Yeah, I mean, he's just not a guy you really target anymore. Um, not that you even were at the beginning of the year, but I don't think we expected this. You know, He's been borderline dominant here over the last month and a half, so 
Um, I'm not, I love this Marlins lineup. You've heard us talk about them pretty consistently over the last few weeks, but this is, I don't think this is a night to sort of go at him. Um, and then Nicolino, I mean, he is, he is bad. Um, but he is a lefty. So you wonder how much that negates some of the advantage, um, for the Braves, obviously Freeman, um, in play at 3,900, even though it's a lefty. Yeah, I think so too. Freeman at that price tag is in play for me. As you mentioned, Nicolino, not a good arm by any means. Um, I, I like Jim Frank Core, 3,300, nice cheap outfielder with some pop. Mm-hmm. Obviously hits lefties pretty well. Uh, and you look at Nicolino, I mean, as you mentioned, not a ton of righties in this lineup, but if they do throw in some extra guys there, Nicolino allowing a 373 uh, well with the right handers, 40% hard ball rate. So they're teeing off from the right side. So you're kind of looking, you're kind of hoping Adonis Garcia would be a little bit cheaper, but 4,300 is. That's kind of a steep yeah, price that's for him. crazy. The, and and it's like the probability that the Braves get eight or nine hits, I actually think is pretty good, but I just think they're going to spread it out throughout yeah. the lineup, and that doesn't really do much for you. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Yeah, I just think this game's going to be kind of pretty weak. Uh, I think just Jeff and Corey's the only guy that I'll take the shot with. Right. So, uh, White Sox and Astros here. Next one, you got Miguel Gonzalez versus Mike Fires uh, in Houston. Decent hitters park there. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, Miguel Gonzalez is a guy who I think you can look at and target. Uh, I mean, 344 will be allowed to righties. Um, and, and you're looking at a lot of those guys. Same thing to lefties. Really, one through five there with a lot of pop. Uh, they're expensive, but you know I, I like them quite a bit. The Astros are coming around. Yeah, they definitely are. Um, so, I mean, Valbuena, Erasmus, those even are decent options at this stage, especially against a weak righty. So that's that's what I'm looking at there. And obviously, um, George Springer is a decent option. Um, so I, I think out of the three high-end options, that's, that's who I'm going to be targeting. Um, but beyond that, it's really just um, the, the lefties in that lineup for me. Just the lefties for Astros, yeah, and then Springer. Okay, yeah, I mean, I I, I don't mind a Korea at five three. Um, obviously, they're expensive, so I think that's kind of one downside yeah. to them as they carry a lot of salary to their names. But obviously, we can see it pay off before. I mean, I think I think there are going to be plenty of runs here. Yeah, that that's more price considered, um, but uh, than anything else. But out of those three, I do like Springer the most. Yeah. And uh, on the other side, I mean, obviously, Fires uh, has been allowing uh, a fair amount to, to right hand at bats. I mean, 364 Woba, 40% hard ball rate, 1.61 home oh, run this year. Oh, the Todd, the Todd Frazier uh, radar was on yesterday. He, did, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> he might be my guy. He might be like, we might have a connection. Well, can you share that with me? <laughs> We talked. You joked about it yesterday. I did. On one of them. I know. I mean, I don't know how real it actually is, but anyway, um, that's enough of me humble bragging. Um, so, but no, tonight I, I like Adam Eaton against Fires. I like uh, I like Tim Anderson. Uh, I don't mind Jose Abreu and Todd Frazier as well. I mean, Frazier obviously is a GPP play, and obviously I think everyone outside of, of Anderson's a GPP play for me uh, against Fires here because it's White Sox lineup. Uh, they're not consistent, uh, even in good no. matchups. So I, I think it's kind of disappointing. But I, I don't mind those price tags. I'll definitely have a little bit of shares because I do think you kind of catch them at pretty low ownership tonight. Yeah, yeah, definitely more of a tournament uh, type of lineup. But it, nonetheless, could see some upside there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, moving on the next game here, you got the Rangers and the Twins, Urban Santana versus Martin Perez. And uh, oh. in Minnesota, and uh, uh, – Pretty relatively high run total to kind of target. And, um, you know, you're looking at right hand at bats here in that Twins lineup. And obviously, Perez has been kind of your average lefty. Um, yeah. So, guys like Dozier stand out. Uh, obviously, Trevor Plouffe, Robbie Grossman, uh, Nunez. I, I don't mind those guys. I, I think one on a full slate, the Twins would get lost a little bit here. Um, but I, I think they could be some kind of contrarian options there. Definitely. Yeah, I like Robbie Grossman, 3,400. Um, and I, yeah, Dozier's more of a tournament guy, but he could definitely pay off. We saw it yesterday. So um, definitely intriguing there. Um, and as far as Irvin Santana goes, same same situation we always look at, sort of with 
power on the Rangers, Mazzara, and uh, throwing Chu in there, and and a Beltre just because it's Adrian Beltre. Yeah, I, I like Beltre quite a bit. I like that price tag for him. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, mother of Mary, <laughs> Beltre quite a bit. I mean, four three is a decent price tag, and right handers have hit him hard. So. Um, mm. 361 will be allowed to righties this year for Santana. So I, I do think Beltre and Desmond's expensive. Uh, and Desmond at that price is just solely a GP yeah, play for me. Super, super so, expensive, yeah. I'm not quite high on the Rangers offense, but I, I do like a couple of those names. I mean, mm-hmm. for me, I, I think kind of the guys we talked about before, like a Maven and Upton, I kind of see myself maybe targeting just a little bit more. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I just... You look at this game, and I could just see it being a seven to ten game, just annoyingly, um, with some of the back of the end of the lineup guys sort of pitching in quite a bit. So that's kind of what I see from this game. Not necessarily a targeting individual guys, other than a few in the Twins lineup. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I think it's kind of be one where you pick your spots. I mean, those right-handed bats from both these teams are kind of where I'm looking, and. So that could be guys that get a ton of exposure too, but I think as far as one offs is in lineups is what I'm gonna be just to kinda of distance myself, you know. Definitely. Uh Brewers and Cardinals next one here, Matt Garza versus Jaime Garcia. Um Cardinals big letdown last night against Chris Young. I mean mm. you were probably swearing at, the, at most of the Cardinals hitters. Mm. Ouch. That yeah. one hurt. I mean, I was pretty hype about going against Chris Young, but Again, one in 20 starts is going to have one of these, so you just got to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you hope they can rebound here. I mean, Matt Garza, uh, not quite the pitcher that he used to be, and I, I still don't mind some of these guys here. I mean, Carpenter 5-4 is expensive. Uh, I'm not quite as high on him as I was last night uh, on a full slate here, too. Right. So uh, I still don't mind him, um, but overall, I think this game's just going to be kind of a stay-away situation for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, mostly a stay away, uh, other than maybe an Aaron Hill came at a pretty cheap price. We'll see um, what goes on with that and where he is in the lineup. But if he's high in the lineup, 2,900, pretty decent matchup. Yeah, definitely. And, I mean, Villar's a guy who usually we see pretty expensive, but against lefties, he's been pretty, pretty solid. And Garcia really hasn't been yeah. the strong lefty that he was earlier this season. So 4-2, I don't mind. Braun at 5-1 is a little expensive for me, but obviously we know the upside. Yeah. Here. It's it's expensive though. Uh, I just just personally, um, and and based on sort of the splits in Vegas totals, I think I'd rather go with the Red Sox high end guys than Braun tonight. Yeah, I, I think so too. He kind of sits in a range where I like a lot of guys better. Mm-hmm. Uh, Giants and Diamondbacks. Next one here, you got Johnny Quaid over Shelby Miller. Um, Giants bats, I, I like a little bit here more. Great ballpark, Chase Field. The, the prices are still high, but I still really actually like them. I mean, now I think Belt, Posey 5K is expensive, but obviously I think if you're looking at a Giants stack, I, I do think the Giants are stackable here tonight. He is never a deal, ever. Not once has he been like even slightly at a reduced price. He's just max possible price that can put him at every night. It's so annoying. Like he did pay off yesterday, but it was like, do you, do you really want to? Do you really want to? Do you really want to? No. No, I don't. And I'm not going to do it tonight again. And if he hits another homer, I don't want to do it the next night either. So, <laughs> no, Buster Posey. Get your price reduced. Call up DraftKings. I don't want to deal with it anymore. Um, I, they're all expensive. I, I mean, they're you're all in Shelby like, Miller. Stop. Can I get a deal, please? The no. only time. The could only you, time the Giants have been a deal is when they've been like against Kershaw. And it's like, all right, well, fine. But uh, yes, that's that's my rant. Um, I do like some of these guys. Obviously, you have to pretty much like them against Shelby Miller. Um, but Denard Spann, I mean, 46, I don't really want to pay that. Belt, 51, I like it. But again, I'd rather pay up for those Red Sox. So kind of annoying. But whatever. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I definitely see the logic as far as being annoyed with their pricing. Uh, I like them actually quite a bit. I, I do think they're an interesting, expensive swerve, uh, and I do think they're stackable in that ballpark. 
Um, and obviously, I mean, we've talked about Angel Pagan and Crawford the last few days, but now that price tags are definitely up. Um, it's going to take some edge off on edges as far as ownership off of them. And, and I think you're just looking at Shelby Miller. I mean, this season, 417 Woba to left is when he's been healthy. Um, 353 Woba to right is when, when he's been healthy. So I just think you can look one through five here. And I do think it's kind of a stackable swerve from a lot of those top offenses. Yeah, because there's going to be a lot of people like me. So you'll be able to take advantage of that in a good matchup for sure. Yeah, definitely. And Arizona side, it's just kind of an easy pass against Cueto. Yep. So, yep, for sure. Um, look at the Pirates and the A's here. and um, I like Sonny Gray. I'm not, I'm not going to be touching Pirates tonight. I think uh, Sonny Gray is the one guy I, I'm going to be firing away at. So that's, that's where it is. Well, that's the take, hard. folks. I, I don't mind. I don't know. I still don't mind a McCutcheon. <laughs> um, and he's the only name. Like, I'm not going to pay a 4 9 for Polanco, uh, 5 no. for Marte. I like more the actual the A's side of things that gets locked. Um, of Fagley, of Valencia. I think those guys are really intriguing yeah. plays. And as you mentioned, Semyon, I mean, there's a reason why he's 4,600. He'll sneak up into the lineup into the top half against lefties, but he does crush left-hand pitching. Yeah, um, like you mentioned, um, Fagley subs in for Vought, so you just kind of fire A's pitcher, uh, or A's catcher. That's just a designated term now. I don't care who it is. I like both of them. Just fire them in there. Um, they're always at a pretty good price. They're they're like the superhero to the uh, villain of Buster Posey, who's always overpriced and upsetting. So that's okay. your superhero drama for the day. Um, <laughs> you look at Log. I mean, 357 will be allowed to right handers. 1.27 home runs per nine. We've seen the A's put up, you know, sizable yeah. runs, and, and I do think I like Valencia at the price tag. Uh, Chris Davis, if he's back into the lineup. Um, and Fagley and Semyon are definitely all in play for me. Yeah, so so we're actually kind of looking at the end of that lineup. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, middle middle lineup there. Uh, Rockies and Dodgers. This next one, Jorge De La Rosa versus Bud Norris. And you looking? I mean, this was Ooh. supposed to be like Kershaw and Bud Norris is pitching and DraftKings botched the salary um, here, and you get Charlie Blackman, uh, Nolan Arenado. Carlos Gonzalez, <laughs> all under 4K. All under 4K against Bud Norris. And this has been news for a couple of days now, and I just feel like, okay, really? Oh, yeah. see, I – no, see, because I like this. This no, makes me happy. I do too, but it's like, okay, come on. Like, be on top of this, you know? No, nah. no, I like this. This makes me happy. Thank you, guys. This, Yeah. I mean, okay, so what are they going to be? F- honestly – Honestly, could be over 40% in tournaments tonight. I, I think Cargo is certainly going to carry a ton of weight at 3,400. I mean, that's going to be. Yeah. Good. Um, and even Aaron so, so, Cash, um, you're definitely throwing these guys in. I mean, I don't see the reason to fade them, you know? Um, but tournaments, I think you can go with some other higher end stuff. And I think a lot of people are going to get caught up with the pricing of this lineup. Yeah, I, the only thing that I see happening is, you know, you pay up for pitching, these guys slide right in. So I think if you pay up for, for pitching in tournaments, I mean, these guys just kind of fit right in. And uh, mm-hmm. you're looking at Bud Norris, I mean, he's had a couple of decent starts of late. Um, but overall, I mean, 367 will be a lot to lefties. Um, you know, righties have, have hit him relatively well, too. So I, for me, I, I just think you're looking there and, and, uh, you know, you, you roll with those bats and it's in both formats. I'd really be afraid to kind of fade a cargo with that price tag. Yeah, and and a Trevor Story as well. I mean, that's tough to fade at 3,200 even in a less than perfect matchup. So um, obviously you're looking at these guys pretty hard, um, especially if like a Nick Hundley's in, he's min. So yeah, I, you're definitely looking hard at these guys. I'm just saying um, in terms of tournaments – Fading the chalk here, they're going to be ultimate, ultimate. Other than Cargo, I don't think you can really fade him, honestly. It, it would be tough to do. And, and on the Dodgers side of things, um, you know, you get Jorge De La Rosa, who's been bad outside of cores, been bad inside of cores. Um, 
for me, I mean, the Dodgers bats, I mean, they're not necessarily intriguing uh, like the lefties. I mean, I, I don't mind a Seager even in the lefty-lefty matchup, but it's expensive price tag. Um, I like a lot of the righties who come at a really, really decent value here. Yeah, um, I'm okay with Justin Turner at 38. I think that's a pretty reasonable price. And then Howie Kendrick as well. Um, I'm not really diving into the the Yasiel Puig type of range, but um, I can understand a Trace Thompson as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Trace Thompson, Howie Kendrick, kind of in terms of the kind of notable names there. Um, so I do think, I mean, you're going to get some value in this game. And I, and I think come the end of the night, if you don't have any pieces and you see that run score start to go up, you might just see uh, a little bit of dropping in the leaderboards because I do think there's going to be some kind of, you know, moderate to heavy on guys in this game. Yeah, and that's going to be trouble for you, all your uh, giant stacks too, huh? I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know, I'll have one giant stack. <laughs> And then when we ne- we do a pod, you'll just see me wearing gold chains, and I'll just have a grill. You know? <laughs> like oh my god! If, if if the Giants go off tonight, I uh, that's going to be bad for me. Yeah, I, I'll owe you a uh, a hot dog at a baseball game or something. I don't oh, know. thanks! Thanks for really shelling out the dough for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they are probably like fifteen bucks now, so oh, they're expensive. Yeah. yeah. Orioles and Mariners, the next one here. Uh, Kevin Gossman versus Wade LeBlanc. And um, you look at some of these guys. I mean, LeBlanc, uh, a lefty. Um, you know, I, I think you can look at some of these Baltimore right handed bats. I'm not going to get crazy with them, but I do think some of them are in play. I, I did some research yesterday. Um, it's not Jonathan Schwoop, it's Jonathan Scope. So now that I'm aware of that. You did some research? I freaking told you. <laughs> They don't know that. Um, you can edit that out. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. So Jonathan Scope for you playing at home. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That was a little insider tidbit yeah. for you. Uh, Adam Jones at four four. I don't mind. Um, eh. Trumbo at four five are also kind of intriguing. Yeah. Uh, once again, I, I think they're just kind of one offs as far as the right handed bats. I don't see the Baltimore guys as a full stack and. I'm not necessarily on this game. I mean, obviously, there's two offenses, but yesterday I was. I think it was a smaller slate here. I just like a lot of other options better than this game. Yeah, I, I mean, I still like going to the well with Seager at 38, um, under 4K. I, I do like that price. But beyond beyond that, um, this game really isn't all that appealing to me. No, I don't think so either. I mean, Crossman's a guy who, um, I mean, right-handed bats have hit him hard um, and have hit him well, so... For me, I don't yeah. mind Nelson Cruz at 4,100. I think he's the only right. guy I'm taking a look at. And obviously, could know at 43 is intriguing, but um, Gossman's relatively tough on lefties. So uh, I'm, I'm yeah. kind of, I mean, the hard ball rate's up, though. So that's kind of the only positives. But I think the price tags are decent. But out of 10 lineups, he's 78. He, he's, he, he's cheap, but it's not like he's a, he's a horrible arm, you know? He, yeah. he can do some. He's got, he's got a little. Uh, he can cause a little problem for for this Mariners lineup. Yeah, I think so too. Um, we won the last game of the night here. You got the Yankees and Padres. Mm. Nathan Yovaldi versus Colin Rea. And um, yeah, Nathan Yovaldi hasn't really been good. Um, no. Obviously, he's tougher on righties than he is on lefties, but um, he's even been righties up have been, a, a lot of home runs. And it's not like Petco's been like. Keeping them in either. I mean, we've seen some yeah. problems in, uh, in Petco this year, and uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of Yoel Aldi. Um, I mean, obviously the price tags are really high for the Padres, so I think that's the downside for me there. Right. I I mean I I'm really looking at a Matt Kemp here. Um, even righty on righty, I think I think it's a decent matchup for him at only 4100. So I think that's the guy in that lineup. I, Will Myers has obviously proven himself this year, but. Um, for thirteen hundred more, that's and at first where you could play Ortiz instead. I, I think you just make that swerve there. Um, but I, I definitely do like Matt Kemp, and I do think he's in play. Yeah, and I mean Yankee side of things. I mean they're relatively moderately, whatever you want to call it, kind of underpriced. I think maybe you could say. I mean, or accurately priced. I mean, Elbert yeah. Garner in that four K range, 
my cans mm. are a little expensive for my taste, but um, Lefty Power Impact goes pretty neutral. It's pretty average, so uh, I don't mind those guys there. Uh, and Castro 3.3 three is intriguing. Yeah, and I mean, you got to share sitting there at 32. So I, I like the Gardener to share a grouping there. Um, but beyond that, um, I think you're sort of looking for higher upside with your lineups tonight. And there are some deals, as we mentioned earlier. So um, that's not necessarily a lineup I'm trying to stack. You're not trying to stack either of these teams. So Gardner no. to share and then, and then a Will Myers are the guys I'm looking at this game. Yeah, and I think, you know, overall, um, as we mentioned with the, the Colorado grouping, um, it, that takes kind of a lot of guys in this price range and those late games yeah. kind of out of play a little bit. Uh, and I think there are swerves. I think you can mix and match together. So, you know, as usually we kind of focus in on the 7 o'clock games, I'm not really afraid to kind of target and go after the late slate there. Yeah, and I guess one more thing um, before we go. The end of the Padres lineup here with with Schimpf and uh, Dickerson, if they're in the lineup, lefties versus Ivaldi. I mean, are those punt plays you're actually looking at and viable, or is that not something you're actually entertaining? Uh, if I need them. Um, but, I mean, to be honest, I, I just think, as we mentioned with Upton, um, yeah, the Colorado bets, they're not punt plays as part of prices. I mean, Upton is kind of like that, but – those are going to be my type of punt plays. Uh, I just think I don't yeah. need to, to stoop down to a level that low on uh, tonight's slate with mm -hmm. how the pricing works. But I, I think if you are looking at a Red Sox stack or, or a Giant stack, you might have to do something like that. Yeah. So that's going to wrap things up here with the DK Daily Trot. Be sure to check out DailyFantasyCafe.com for all great tools and content.